Behind each photograph, a story of a life lost. Faces now missing on family milestones. <laughs> Mark Gillen fell ill with Covid last April, just before his twin daughter's birthdays. They'll turn 21 next month without him. So it's been a numb year. And I think this year is going to be more of the, the realisation that, you know, life has changed. You know, now mum and dad, which I struggle with because he was my right hand. The girls' life stopped that day and it's not really started since. For somebody that was so quiet and didn't say too much, but when he spoke, he spoke. Like, he brought so much happiness and I think you only realise now how big of a space he actually did leave. Described by their families as true gentlemen, much-loved sons, husbands, fathers and grandfathers. Andrew McGinley said he had no need to play the lottery, as he felt like a millionaire when surrounded by his family. Mark Whitaker was happy-go-lucky, always telling jokes. Colin Harris, who trained as a jockey, was also known for filling his home with laughter. Valentina Alamoska, who died on Valentine's Day, was known to give a warm welcome to all entering her Edinburgh home. Yes. Her personality was like, like a sunshine, basically. Wherever she went, she was like shining light. She was just a people person, you know. She was so proud of her family, of her friends. And that's what I miss the most, like her presence, because this house was so alive. At 104 years old, John Connolly was Rangers' oldest season ticket holder. As a young man, he appeared in adverts as one of the original Brill Cream Boys. Glyn Edwards was a proud Welshman living in Scotland. Harry Kerridge was passionate about the environment. Roddy MacDonald, who lost many colleagues while working on Piper Alpha, will be remembered as a quiet man and a loyal friend. Lorry driver Jim Russell, nicknamed Big Gorgeous by his workmates, had been due to get married. Donald Bagley, who drove Kilmarnock Football Club's team bus, was looking forward to the birth of his niece's baby. James Yates had become a grandfather to four girls in the last two years. To those who loved them, they were the heart of their family. In the quiet of a new memorial garden, ribbons are left in honour of colourful lives. Words from Debbie McMahon's grandchildren hang from the tree. Debbie worked with Scottish Fire and Rescue for 25 years. Every first is hard. The first Christmas was... Oh, it was really, really hard. Um, so, because she was so much family orientated, it was really that was her life. David Wilson died within months of losing his partner Agnes Addison, who was the heart and soul of the street she lived on. Eileen Honeyman liked to live in a spur of the moment, even daring to have a go on a motorbike at the age of seventy. Grandmother Connie Simpson was the first up to dance and the first with a story to tell. Well, my mum was invincible. She was a mum in a million. She was a gran in a million. I miss her so much. She stayed one door away from me. I look into her house and, uh, you know, it hurts. It really, really hurts. I just want her to be there so I can have a fight with her or an argument with her or a laugh with her. Memories now replace those moments on a day to reflect on loss and love. Sharon Frew, STV News.